Yeah, it is. We just saw it on display with the with the All Stars. So you know, this is where it begins. This is the grassroots footy we talk about. Um, a lot of who I'm sure will go on to play for the NRLW and NRL All Stars. Absolutely. Now the time to shine for these young women. Victoria with first opportunity in the purple strip here today. It's got a, sorry, Joe, I was going to say, it gives a little bit of Melbourne storm about it, I've got to say. <laughs> Absolutely. So Victoria with the first opportunity with ball in hand, making some good headway up the middle as well through Yvonne Sevilla. Tipping it back underneath now finds Tunisi. First Nations gems mussing up in defence as well over the top. Working in duos. Left side through Morrison. And that one doesn't go to hand. So now the First Nations gems have a good crack in strong field position as well. Through Jessica Howard out of the Monaro Club. Third year in the Gems program for Jessica. So here goes Hinch. Sends a loopy pass over the top. Missed on the first attempt, but Murphy's there to scoop it up. So it wasn't pretty, but they still maintain possession to the Gems. Fleming. Of the Australian Prime Minister's side. As we said, stacked. Full of talent. That's a, a barnstorming line. And Marshall puts down the hammer, reaches out and scores. Tanika Marshall. An absolute line of doom. Yeah, what a cracking start. Only less than two minutes in to this first game here with the number two. I believe it was Tanika Newton there, my apologies. on the. Yeah, sorry, Tanika Newton, you're right, Jordan. I uh, just want to make sure we get that name uh, right, the number two. But we'll see the replay, an absolute barnstorming of a run. She broke through the defence line of Victoria to put uh, early points on. Very similar game we saw uh, between the Queensland Sapphires and Fiji. Very early points as well. So whether this will be the trend where the First Nations Gems put the points on, it was on the back end of a mistake from Victoria. So great to capitalise off it and see those points from Tanika Newton so early on. That was all class through the soft hands there and an absolute incredible running line as well. <laughs> yeah, I certainly wouldn't have been jumping in front of her. But there was about four or five Victorian players she had to beat off to put those points down. So it wasn't easy. But some lovely footwork as well. We saw from the number two. Played for the Indigenous All-Stars back in 2020. Another young athlete returning to the game after becoming a mother, which is great to see, and she's certainly well and truly back, that's for sure. Yeah, certainly some proud babies out there watching their families on display in both teams. Uh, but like you said, we, when we said before, you know, like there's so many mums, they're just incredible athletes, women. So, yeah, great to see the game just expanding to all, all areas of Australia as well. We saw Northern Territory and Western Australia earlier today, South Australia later, and First Nations Gems from around Australia. Perfect start for the Gems, leading six points to nil in this first half. So Victoria did look pretty sharp in their first set, just couldn't finish off. And you can't do that against this Gem side because they will make you pay. Yeah, that wind is starting to pick up as well. You can see it in the background, the trees blowing, the bulls having a hard time sticking to the tee. Almost need a piece of Velcro on that. Or a teammate's hand, maybe. And that's the way they'll go as Victoria gets us underway. It's a favourable bounce there for Victoria. And Gems dive on it and we'll go into touch there. Weatherall just sticking a mitt on it, so Victoria will get a good chance here. Yeah, that was a tricky one. There's not really much Weatherall could have done. The <laughs> ball went out anyway. It would have been possession for Victoria. So a great start for the Victorian team, whether that was intentional or not. We'll say yes. Yeah, I'll say yes. That's skill. Jalen Tunisi takes it up in the middle of the rain. 
starts to pour here at Pizzy Park. Sevilla of the Sunshine Cowboys Club. Center field. Left side they go. Holding up there is Nalil. And good defense from the Gems up in the face. The line speed is immense early on. Looking to respond now. Townsend. Straight across the face now to Eldridge. She in turn finds Stevens. We spoke about her in the pregame. She's an absolute lightning rod with ball in hand. Fifth and final. Victoria looking to respond. Having a daft and close quarters. He won't go through there. An absolute wall of defense there for Morrison. And it'll be a changeover. Good defense from the Jams early on. Yeah, great defense, but uh, the Victorian side has left carnage and a lot of the First Nations Jams on the back foot. Uh, great, great completed set from Victoria, so they'll be happy with that. Uh, the coach, Henry Strickland. So the Jams on the charge through Patterson. Just her second year playing rugby league for Lily. So the Gems leading six points to nil. Five gone in this first half. Just juggle there. Playing with plenty of confidence are the Gems early on. Hinch holds it up and Hinch almost goes through herself. Gets the goal offload away to Fleming on the inside. Keeping it alive. Finds Bamlet, the former Australian schoolgirl. Fifth and final for the Gems. They go left side through Bamlet. She toes that one ahead and one bounce into touch. That's a good option there. Well weighted there from the young half. Yeah, great set from the First Nations Gems. Really aggressive and some lovely little offloads there uh, between the halves to you know gain another 10, 20 metres, which certainly makes a difference in games like this when you've only got 20 minutes a half. You've really got to work in that time frame and, and work hard for sure. So it'll be Victoria once again forced to work hard for their own 20. First Nations Gems defence has been strong early on. Taking away that time and space from the Victorians. Slow ball there for Morrison. For coming left hand side to Makutu. She plays it. Again, the nations, First Nations gems getting under the ribs and just driving hard in everything they're doing. I just think there's three more days of this. I know. It's a really aggressive start for the first 10 minutes, but you know. Ooh. That was almost something special. The kick out wide there. I thought Morgan King may have been away. She was twinkle toes on the chalk there, and the paint got her in the I end. No, it's dangerous. You flirt with the try line. If she just was, you know, a few mils in, I think we could have seen early points there. But great insight and great kick. I think it was the bounce, actually, that took it to the right, and you can see her there, twinkle toes. Unfortunately, King stepping out. To the gems once again, a ball in hand. Probing up the field, Fleming gets it up the middle, and now Luswich is part of the Newcastle Knights development squad. Wallace in the 18 jersey. And that's a. That was the play, just not executing well to the right hand side. The space was there for Bamlet, and she saw it. Yeah, great attempt and great vision and insight, I would say, from the half. But just a little bit flat that it was Ford. And uh, Indiana Tillett, the number five, who also no stranger to the NRLW. Uh, the sister of Tallulah Tillett, the NRLW, great. Very proud Torres Strait Islander family up in far north Queensland. Uh, doing some great things, uh, Indiana and Cairns as well particularly for women in sport, women in rugby league. Very big advocate. 
Definitely opportunity down that right-hand flank for the jams. Madeline Simon, she jammed in from a long way. Something for them to target, no doubt. As the Victorians now still trailing six points to nil. Morrison. Quick hands down the right-hand side. Finds Stevens. She's someone you need to have ball in hand. Very flat-footed in their attack. Oh, the Victorians so far. For our awful Toala, she'll play it. And that's a better run from Victoria. Straight up the guts. Leading by example. Alison Morrison, right side. Eldridge gets to her kick. They've got a good chase line as well. And they make the first up tackle. Good end of a set there for Victoria. They'll get plenty of confidence out of that. And again, muscling up in defence. Jasmine Morrissey, number three, the former hockey player. The second year with the Gems. Hockey into rugby league. It's a strange transition, but I love it. Strange, but you would, you know, watching a game of hockey, you can certainly understand why it's quite a violent game. So it probably is a is the gateway almost into NRL, into the rugby league, I should say. She wanted some more contact as Tanika Newton, the first try scorer in this contest, takes it up and now back into the pocket there for Bamela. Just hinch there, just leaning onto that kick and goes high, but well taken. By Victoria there at the back. And you'll see in the 21 jersey, just out of screen now, Makaya Belarus, the US, USA international. Successful in the NRL combine over in Las Vegas. She is on the field. And from all reports, she's an absolute flyer. Yeah, she certainly is. And what a great opportunity for her to be able to play alongside the First Nations Gems. It won't be the only team they play alongside. Uh, they're essentially just going to be playing throughout the tournament, making up numbers in the team. So I'm sure we're going to see her put on a jersey for Victoria, New South Wales, uh, South Australia as the as the game develops, as the tournament develops. Well, but it's getting minutes and opportunity to spread this great game around the world. Yeah, exactly right. And you know how great would it be if we eventually saw an NRLW team in the states? That's more positions, that's more opportunities for women, which is really the goal of this tournament. Well, we saw NRL in Las Vegas earlier this year. It's only a natural path, though, where there's a women's game in that in that concept as well. So it's all positive. It's Victoria, fourth to turn it over here. The First Nations Gems have started off really quick and fast-paced, and it's sort of meddled out now as the Victorian girls have started to switch on. So a little bit more of an even game, a bit of a tug-of-war, particularly in the middle 40. One the extra step there, the referee, it's a bit too eager, Victoria on that occasion, so now the Gems. I have a chance here to further extend the lead. Eight minutes left in this first half. Might attempt to use that right side again, they've got Tillard on, the, on that right wing, she looked dangerous in that first few minutes, so we might see them heading that way again. In the 22 jersey as well, Megan Herculis, the Canada Ravens international onto the field as well. So great to see them getting involved early on here on day one. So the Gems on the attack now through Hinch. Beautiful cut pass, it bounces into the arms of Ballarus and we said she's got wheels and she cuts back into the traffic and takes three of them to get her down. So the Gems hot on the attack. Looking for their second score. Leading six points to nil. And the dummy and go from close quarters. And she caught the napping and she makes them pay. Gems have their second try. That was an absolute show and go. Could have gone right, didn't, took it herself. And find the white line. We'll see it in the replay here. The elusive 14, Laylee Phillips. 
puts the points on. So unexpected. We expected her to go right, but like you said, Jordan, she caught them napping. And another four points for the First Nations. Gems, as we'll see, some extra auxiliary coming on the field and a well-deserved break for the players. It looks like uh, we'll see Jessica Howard and Shayla Morton-Stewart take the field. And they've got stacked bench. Both teams have stacked benches, so... Uh, fatigue shouldn't be an issue for the teams, not on day one anyway. Oh, there is some grave concern here for Young Hinch. Down on her haunches, there looks to be in a world of pain. Looks to be a shoulder from here, which is not what you want to see. She's been really impressive early on. Yeah, she certainly has been. But it looks like she's getting the best care and a big shout out to all of the support staff and crew that travel with the teams, not just the players, but everyone who ensures the players stay in physical shape and, you know, fighting shape to be on the field. Looks like she's standing now, though, which is certainly encouraging. So the Gems leading 10 points to Neil. And she looks like she's <laughs> staying on, too. <laughs> Might have just had the no uh, wind knocked out of her. Tough as they come. The Yas Magpies Club for Hinch, the number six. So now for the extra two, Tiana West. Drills that one home, and there's two more for FNG. 12 points to nil over Victoria. Here's that replay again, the show and go from the 14. Laylee Phillips, she had everyone, including our cameras, Going right, and she shot back left. A sensational play from the 14. Caught everyone on the back foot. A very uh, convincing show and go, I would say. And there's the try screw it, taking that one cleanly and just tips it on. So it's been a steady first-half performance from the Jams. Plenty to improve on, I'd say, but definitely positive signs early on in attack and defence. Yeah, really consistent, I would say, as well. And ball possession has certainly been in there. In there for, well, they've certainly held on to the ball a lot more than the Victorian girls have. But again, it's just that consistency and turning up for each other, backing it up, the stamina's there. And a fresh bench certainly helps as well. As Phillips once again gets some easy metres. As Peculis goes forward and gets the offload away, it's a good pass. Bamlet reins it in. Numbers are plenty left-hand side as Hinch gets that kick away. And it's deep in the end goal. It will be one bounce and goes dead. So we'll come back to the 20. And Victoria survived that on floor once again. They've just been camped down their own end, haven't they? Yeah, I've got to say, it's more survival than thrive at the moment for Victoria. They haven't had a lot of possession, so maybe that will change now. But they've also been giving a lot, away a lot of penalties for the First Nations Gems to capitalise off. And little errors like that. Here's a bit of a coach killer for Victoria. Just gifting possession back to the Gems. And here's that replay. We just spoke about it too. It's just those piggybacks down the field. It's errors they really can't afford to be making. And it'll come off the, the half there. Or oh, the hooker, Tough. sorry, the number seven. Tough there. Yep. So right-hand side, that one goes out the back door there from Bamlet, but Scooped up there from Newton. So the Jams looking to strike once again before half time. Two minutes left. Or under two minutes until the half time break. Quick hands now through Hinch. Holds it up nicely and now putting the foot down. Charging forward. Is Jukes, the former Australian schoolgirls hockey star as well. Options left-hand side. Numbers are plenty. And take your pick. And crashing over. Germany Weatherall with the Gems third try. 
And they're doing a job here. They certainly had something building. You can see they had the momentum and the pace. And just eyes up from the half in the number six before a lovely little offload. Uh, from the 14, apologies there, half again to find Weatherall. The number four, she certainly had to work for it. A little bit of a spin away from the Victorian defenders who were just too slow before Weatherall put another four points on for the First Nations Gems. Right on half time for the Gems, 16 points to nil. Tanea Hinch, she's the star of the show for me so far. Just confidence in the way she's playing the game. Takes the ball to the line. Great skill set, strong pass, and it's doing a job early on. Yeah, she's everything you really want in one of your playmakers in the halves. She just seems to be directing traffic out there, and traffic to 16 points in the first half is one of the highest scoreboards we've seen in this competition so far. Probably on par with Fiji and the Queensland Sapphires. So the kicks don't get any easier, though, for West at white. She looks to fade that one around. It's a good strike. Just can't get there. So the score remains 16 points to nil. And it will be time for a restart here for the halftime break. No, they won't. So half time here in the First Nation Gems leading Victoria 16 points to nil. Let's see how it all unfolds. Get action back underway. Stevens with that booming boot sends it down inside the tent. So the Nations First Nation Gems forced to bring it out through Wallace. The whole theme of their game has been there. Strong go forward around the base of the rock, just getting those easy meters. We see here once again, it's done through Peculus. Bamlet forced to go reaching for it. And Sullivan takes that straight and true up the middle. Good feet there from Lushwitz. Now, here's a good opportunity once again, getting the arms free and just snatching at it. it was Belarus down that left-hand edge. But once again, the Jams, they're not scared to go wide early. Yeah, great momentum straight out, as we'll see in the Harvey Norman replay here. That left edge, and I think that's probably where they're most, they're the most dangerous, is when they have open space. But unfortunately, Belarus just unable to catch that, knocking it forward. So we'll see Victoria now with ball back in hand. So Victoria looking for their first try of this matchup. They've been struggling to get out of their own half in the opening 20. And as we said, Dana Stevens, she is arguably their most attacking weapon out wide. That's a brutal tackle there from Sullivan. Driving young Tule Vuka onto her back. She landed a bit awkwardly as well. She's back to her feet now. play here. Strong contact from the First Nations Gems. It looks like she might have lost the ball. Or, oh. It's falling pretty awkwardly there yeah. on her leg, but looks of things. Would have been really hard for her to hold on to that ball. That was a swinging tackle from the 15. Uh, Phil, uh, sorry, uh, Morton Stewart, the First Nations Gems, all contact to force the error there for Victoria. So the Gems looking strong once again. That one's almost intercepted. There was a hand in there, so we'll come back. But that would have been a great foot race if it could have been taken. Great insight from the Victorian player as well. She just had that eyes up footy, unable to capitalise. But we'll see the replay here. 
First Nations Gems trying to come back down that left side. There's a show and go, the try scorer who passes it on. Jeez, it was there for it. It was there. It was almost served on a silver platter. She just needed to be about one or two steps forward. And I think we would have seen some points for the Victorian team. Great attempt. Hopefully we'll see some more now. It's a 16-nil score. So they'll be looking to do some, some cool and tricky things maybe to put some points on these gems. In the meantime, it's all about the gems. Bamlet getting the pass away under a lot of pressure there. It was Patston. The tillet was there to clean up eventually. Lost about five or so metres, but still with ball in hand, the gems. Playing some expansive footy, throwing it everywhere. And here goes Patson once again, gets the arms free to Wallace. She just stands in the tackle. She'll play it right on the 10, eventually. As we see, a player down in backfield. Off screen there. Looks to be Lee Patston. Down on her haunches will get some treatment. You see this replay here. They're just happy to go keep it tight through the middle. Did get a bit scrappy there in the end. Definitely expensive footy though. It touched about six different gems then, so they're not afraid to throw the ball around. But I think there was just some sort of tackle out the back on Patson. She's got maybe her ankle caught. Patson, yeah. Underneath all of that. And it looks like he might be signalling for a new player potentially to replace Patson. But yeah, there's an even better view. I think she's fumbled with the number nine. Morrison for Victoria. So she'll be getting some medical care there. And I think she'll be getting subbed on as well. Looks like the number 20 for First Nations Jam, Layla Murphy, is ready to replace her. But she's up, which is always encouraging. So the Jams will have ball in hand here. On the 10. As that sub does get made, Murphy onto the field. You don't lose much of Layla Murphy. She's another strike power for the Gems out wide. Yeah, it looks like Patston limping a little bit so maybe an ankle great to see that she's up though always encouraging so she'll have a rest and whether she returns for the rest of the competition uh, we'll see but certainly a great replacement in Layla Murphy the number 20 to take her place so back to live action now as the jams look to Offer some first phase poison on the outside. Good offloads. And the dancing feet trying to weave her way through. The cover comes across. And Makaya Belarus, she'll play it. So the jam's still on the attack. This time through Fleming. Kayla Fleming plays it now for Phillips at the back door for Bamlet. Summing up some options. And here goes Newton. She'll be hard to stop. And that is illegal, you can't be doing that. Ripped in the tackle there, desperation stuff really from Morrison. Yeah, I'd almost say it should be a penalty try, but we'll go back again. I would love to see if the ball wasn't stolen, I almost think it would have ended up over the line. Molita takes it forward, out of the Mackay Cutters. And once again, Looking so strong. The numbers was there and the execution poor from the Jams. Not finishing the job. And they will turn it over. But Victoria, hold on. The score remains 16 points to nil. Yeah, Victoria certainly haven't given up. They're, they're sticking it to the Jams as much as they can. They just haven't had the possession as much as the Jams have had. So will this be the changeover, the turn? With defence like that, I'm not sure. They need to hold on to the ball. Uh, they have made a few errors in their possession. Grace Tuala, she plays it. 
Wamua onto the field. So Victoria bringing on some fresh legs in these closing stages of this match. Just over 10 to play on the clock. And again, having issues inside their own half. Just costly errors. But that's what this competition is all about. Plenty of learnings, that's for sure. The champs must be on the defence in the error. Hard not to make errors, though, when you have uh, the, stamp, the, the absolute brute force of the First Nations gems. But this was after. This was in the play the ball. So, yeah, you'd hope at this level that those sorts of mistakes wouldn't be happening. Uh, like you said before, probably a bit of a coach killer for Henry Strickland. Strickland. So here come the gems. Down their left-hand side, and there's the line, and there's the finish from the Gems. They were just waiting for it, probing their way forward, and Kayla Fleming dots it down, and the Gems crack 20. It's about the third time, I think, they've tried to execute this, coming from the 14 in Phillips. And finally, uh, Kayla Fleming's able to go through with the points. That left edge, there's some sort of magnet, I think, dragging the First Nations gems out there. They seem to really like that side, uh, which Victoria haven't seemed to pick up on just yet. But uh, a great try from Kayla Fleming. A well-deserved try. It was about, the, like I said, the third attempt for her down that left edge. Just that subtle change of direction there at the last minute at the line, just putting the Victorian defence in two minds. And it was all too easy in the end. Virtually untouched. No hurry are uh, the Gems, leading 20 points to nil. Just under 10 minutes left, lining up the extra two points. And the flags go up for the Gems, 22 points to nil. Here's that replay again. Third time's a charm. For Fleming, she palms off about three or four of the Victorian players, finds a space, and that's one thing that Victoria can't afford to give is space, particularly not to players like Fleming. Once the gas is on, she goes. So that will take the First Nations Gems to 22 now over Victoria, still on naught, with a successful conversion, those two-point extras taking them to quite a dominating lead now with only nine minutes left in this second half here. The Gems looking really strong in this competition. Looking forward to see how they keep progressing into the tournament. It's certainly been a, a strong opening performance to set the tone, that's for sure. And they want to keep it going as well. Laylee Phillips in the 14 jersey, been a real energizer to this side since coming onto the field. As Bamlet goes to the line and pops it off. To West there, charging forward as now Bamlet goes, little chipping behind, but well positioned was Stevens. That one's gone out of the back of the hands and, and it's gone forward on that second attempt there from Victoria. So just like that, sets up another attack from the scrum for... You see it here. It was almost a bit unlucky, that second attempt. got a bit of a push in the back as well from Newton. Yeah, it's hard when there's so much pressure and the First Nations gems are coming off the line as well. Uh, hard to regain that ball. 
but another mistake. Could be costly. The First Nations gems are only 20 metres out. We've seen what they can do with the ball, particularly down that left side, which it looks like they're going for again. And that's where they're going. Here's the American speedster, and there's her first try on Australian soil. <coughs> Rugby League, Makaya Belarus dotting it down. A great finish from the American international. A mistake proved costly for Victoria. Like we said, that's that left side they just love so much. And why wouldn't you when you had Michaela on the wing? The 21 from America, the USA national champion, putting the points down for the First Nations Gems. Which is now a 26-point lead over Victoria. Still looking to get on the board. The Nort is there. I can't wait to see Makaya in some open space. You can just see in that short five minutes, the, the turn of foot is quite exciting, and I reckon she'll have some great top speed as well. Yeah, I think she's brought a lot to the whole uh, championship down here as well, not just the First Nations team, because she'll obviously be playing across the carnival as well. But, you know, what a great experience for the Australian players to be able to play with someone from America and vice versa. I think there's a big knowledge and skill exchange out on the pitch for sure. The conversion falls short for the Gems, but it's all one-way traffic. 26 points to nil. We see it here. It was great skill execution. Simple hands did the job. I think Laylee Phillips has also been a standout for the First Nations Gems, uh, wearing the number 14, playing in that hooker position. She just really has a, a great game IQ, an idea of the game and where her players need to be because she's been sending them down that left side. Eyes up footy. She can see that Victoria don't have players. There's no defence there. And when you have the open space and someone like Markea there, it's, it's awfully dangerous. And, and it's ended in four points. Another four points for First Nations Gems. Plenty of points on show here on day one action, the Harvey Norman. Women's National Championships. <laughs> Down to the try screw and she just makes a little error there. With a low bounce and just dropped it on the scoop. So now this is the best chance for Victoria. Can they get points before the full-time siren? Great to see the expansion of not only the NRLW and the game of rugby, but also in terms of the officials and the refs. There's a lot of young women out there in the pink, which is great to see. Hopefully it will start a flow-on effect into the NRLW and we'll start to see that diversification across the code. So Victoria now looking to get their first points of the tournament. Good carry there from Nukutu. Pumping the legs there, pumping the legs there, Lana Muamua. Victoria now five away. Trying to conjure up something. Jakopo in the 14 jersey. Gets it away, very close here, bashing their way across. Looks to be held up and short. Great defence from the Gems. And just... Handing it off there to Fa'ofu Tawala. Which will play it right in front of the sticks. Right hand side, little grubber in behind. It's a good option. Who's going to win the race? And it may be the dead ball line unless she's got a hand to it. And she has. So Victoria will get possession again. Much better set than probably one of the best sets we've seen. From the Victorian girls, a shame that it is only a few minutes left, but uh, hopefully they can only build on this game. And you know, tomorrow and Saturday, Sunday, it might be a completely different game we see. That one's gone backwards, so Stevens with ball in hand falls a bit awkwardly as well. There's a grimace on the way down there from Dana, she's back to her feet. Muamua inside the 10 for Victoria. 
Final two minutes. Desperate for points. Good carry once again from Grace Tuala. Yokopo tips it on, and there it is. There's the try for Victoria. First points, and it goes to Lana Muamua. Under the sticks, and very well deserved, Alex. It is. It's the, probably the third and fourth attempts they've had at under the sticks as well. Doesn't pay off a lot, but when you've got a player with absolute stamina like Lana Muamua, she had every chance of going under the black dot, and she certainly did. First points for Victoria. Could be the only points. We've got a couple of extras with the conversion to come, but it's almost all but over for Victoria. No doubt they'll build plenty of confidence into their next fixture. And definitely some shining lights within that side as well. So now Kate Eldridge will have a chance to knock over two more. No mistake from there for Victoria. 26 points to 6. And there's that replay. The first four points of the competition for Victoria by the number 15, Lana Muamua. And that'll be full time. In this matchup and the First Nations Gems, a dominant performance, defeating Victoria 26 points to 6. Plenty of exciting highlights to talk through. And it was all one way traffic from the opening minute. Big play there. Sold the candy, did Phillips. And the play continued on, didn't Alex? Yeah, it did. Uh, I can't even remember. There were so many tries for the First Nations Gems, but this was a stellar. From the number 19, she took about a 30-metre run before finding the 14 who I spoke about earlier, Laylee Phillips, who passed it off to number four, Weatherall. That was her first points of the competition. And there was a beautiful line there from Kayla Fleming. She's held her feet, a good sharp left foot step and did enough. And then it was the, the newest member of the Rugby League fraternity. Down the left-hand edge, Micaiah Ballarus, throwing it down, and finally Victoria got one on the board. And they certainly did. A very well-deserved one from Moore Moore, straight under the black dot. Four points, a couple extras for Victoria to finish. But don't go anywhere. The action does continue on day one action. New South Wales country taking on PNG, coming up very shortly. <laughs> 